us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before our Maker. Oh, come, let us worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Psalm 95, verse 6. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the privilege that you gave us to go through this day. And Lord, as we saw the worship during the morning, we come back in the afternoon. As a symbol of the sacrifice in the morning and the sacrifice in the evening. To honor you and also to ask for the Holy Spirit to remind us if there is anything we have done wrong. That we need to ask for forgiveness. And also to thank you for the blessings and the victories you gave us through the day. Thank you, Lord, for being our protector, for providing for us, and for giving us the opportunity to talk about these topics that are very important for our families. As we learn more tonight, open our eyes that we may see the truth that you have for us. Even in these lessons that we may repeat over and over, we may find new truths, new blessings, treasures that you have hidden for us that we can have give us a searching heart for your truth lord and love for your ways in jesus name we pray amen Welcome to the family altar of the Woods. Thank you. Welcome to the family altar. Go to. With the hand. Uh -huh. Well. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family altar of the Woods. Welcome to the family altar of the Woods. Welcome to the family altar of the Woods. Thank you. Welcome to the family altar of the Woods. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the family altar of the Woods. Now we will go through the Bible reading of the day, but today, this afternoon, we will go through Matthew 27, 57 through 61. Matthew 27, and you can follow in your Bibles. Matthew 27. <coughs> Fifty seven through sixty one. And it says, When the even was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. To be? And when Joseph had taken the body, the what? Body. He wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. In a what? Clean linen cloth. 
and laid in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out of the, out in the rock. In the and he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. Okay. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulcher. We invite you now to open the Word of God in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 20. We will repeat it first, 1 Corinthians 15.20. So everybody after me, 1 Corinthians 15.20. 1 Corinthians 15.20. But now is Christ, but now is Christ risen from the dead. Risen from the dead. And become, and become the first fruits, the first fruits of, them that slept. of them that slept. 1 Corinthians 15.20. Now we can sing it. From the desire of ages <clears throat> and even as evening drew on an unearthly stillness hung over Calvary the crowd dispensed and many returned dispersed and many returned to Jerusalem greatly changed in spirit from what they had been in the morning many had flocked to the crucifixion from curiosity and not from hatred toward Christ. Still, they believed the accusations of the priests and looked upon Christ as a male factor. Under an unnatural excitement, they had united with the mob in railing against him. But when the earth was wrapped in blackness and they stood accused by their own consciences, they felt guilty of a great wrong. No jest or mocking laughter was heard in the midst of that fearful gloom. And when it was lifted, they made their way to their homes in solemn silence. They were convinced that the charges of the priests were false, that Jesus was no pretender. And a few weeks later, when Peter preached upon the day of Pentecost, they were among the thousands who became converts to Christ. But the Jewish leaders were unchanged by the events they had witnessed. Their hatred of Jesus was, had not abased, the, abated, excuse me. The darkness that had man mantled the earth at the crucifixion was not more dense than that which still enveloped their minds, the minds of the priests and rulers. At his birth, the star 
had known had known Christ. The star, which were the angels, had known Christ and had guided the wise men to the manger where he lay. The heavenly hosts had known him and had sung his praise over the plains of Bethlehem. The sea had known him, had known his voice, and had obeyed his command. Disease and death had recognized his authority and had yielded to him their prey. The sun had known him, and at the sight of his dying anguish had hidden its face of light. The rocks had known him, and had shivered into fragments at his cry. Inanimate nature had known Christ and had borne witness of his diversity. Divinity, Divinity thank you. But the priests and rulers of Israel knew not the Son of God. I thought that was so fascinating in this uh, part of the Desire of Ages uh, in regards to our lesson. All of creation is obedient to God, except for the sinful heart of man. And so um, here we have the things in nature that knew him. What's our character quality? Neatness. <clears throat> Do you remember what it means? Neatness. Cleanliness. That's right. Exact cleanliness, freedom from ill-chosen and impure words, freedom from useless ornaments, orderliness, and tidiness. Were you orderly and tidy today? Did you? What did you do today to make neatness in your home? Wash the dishes. And put them in its place. Sweep. Yes, I saw you sweeping. I swept them up. Mm -hmm. I put, I swept the floor. You did. So you were making our home neat, weren't you? Yes. And remember our scripture, Deuteronomy 23, 14. For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee and to give up thine enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy, that he see no unclean thing in thee and turn away from thee. So I know that Jesus, when he looked at our camp this morning, he was pleased because of your neatness. Do you remember what our nature lesson was this morning? What was it? Do you remember? How to care for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. How to care for the plants. And there was specifically a temperature that we talked about. And what weather are we looking at this week? In cold. In the cold weather. And what's a good place for plants to go in the cold weather? Greenhouse or in mulching. Very good. And did we eat any seeds today? Anything that was growing? What did we have for lunch that could remind us of our lesson? Mm -hmm. mm. This is a tricky question. We... Tomato. Yes. And sometimes tomatoes grow in greenhouses. But what else did we eat? Um, mung, mung beans. What was special about the mung beans that we had? What? It was sprouted. It was sprouted. And what's the first step, Kevin, in a plant growing? It dies. It dies. And then after it dies, what's the second step? It's the step that we saw in our lunch. It grows. Yes, the sprouting. And you know, right at that sprouting time is when the plant has 
even hundreds of times more nutrients than, say, the whole plant. So if you like broccoli, do you like broccoli? Yes. Yes, me too. Well, actually, a broccoli sprout has about 700 times the nutrients of the broccoli itself. And maybe Dr. Boutte can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, that's what I remember off the top of my head. So that sprout, that initial sprout, has so much more nutrients than later as it gets older and mature because it takes a lot of energy for that little seed to rise up again from the dead and to build a big plant like that produces tomatoes or broccoli flowerets or those things. So all of that energy that produces a big plant like this comes from one little seed. And you know who put that energy in the seed and who makes it to grow? Who does that? God. Amen. And who makes us to grow? God. Amen. So right now you are at the first stages, you and Cadmiel, are like little sprouts, and you're going to grow into big plants one day. But right now, in your youth, you know you have a whole lot more energy, and you have a lot of influence right now. And when we get older, we don't have as much energy and things. So it's important that as we're young, we give of our best to the master, that we give him the strength of our youth. So let's remember that as we think of the sprouts and you think about yourselves being like little sprouts, that you have a powerful influence that you can give for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you were listening to Sister Lydia, thank you, Kayla, she mentioned some words. What hymn do you remember when she said, give of yourself to the master? You remember anyone? Give of the strength of your youth. That's the one. So that's what we want. We want to be seeds for the Lord. Now let's do the review. Some questions for you. The first question is, who asked for Jesus' body that it might have a proper burial? Option one, Joseph of Arimathea. Option two, Elijah. Option three, Elisha. Joseph of Arimathea. Second question. Who helped Joseph of Arimathea? Option one, Abraham. Option two, Adam. Option three, Nicodemus. Nicodemus. Praise God. Question three, describe how and where Jesus was buried. Kevin. In a tomb. What is a tomb? A place where you put dead people. And how is it a tomb? Can you describe it? It has a round door. A round door, uh-huh. What else? Is it underground or above the ground? Above. Do you remember any place where you have seen one? Uchi Pines. Ah, you remember the one in Uchi Pines. Yes, in definitely. the steps to Christ. Step to Christ, definitely. That's where we used to have one, definitely. Now, what lessons can we remember from the tomb. I'll give you one so you can <coughs> think about. The ground that you see in that plant, it reminds me of the tomb. Why? Because every time that we plant a seed, it's like if we put it in a hole, right? We make a hole with the finger or with the tool, and then we put the seed there, and then we cover it. And then after that, what happens? It grows. It grows, so it reminds me of the resurrection of Jesus. It grows out, it comes out as a new plan, right? In the same way, it helps me to remember what? The baptism of someone. Why? Because when we put the seed in the ground, it grows to a new plan. But what do we use to make sure that the plant grows? Water. So in the same way, someone that is going in the water as a dead person in the old man comes out of the water after we put them in the water, 
resurrected to a new life in Jesus. So they killed the man. All right. Do you remember, children, the song um, that talks about doing all things decently and in order? Yes. Where is it found? First Corinthians fourteen forty. First Corinthians fourteen forty. So, do you think that it matches with our character quality of neatness? Yes. Okay, can we say it together? Let all things be done decently and in order. First Corinthians 14, 40. Do you remember the song? Yes. Are you ready to sing it? Yes. Okay, like in Baler. Let all things be done decently, decently and in order. Let all things be done decently, decently and in order. First Corinthians 14, 40, 14, 40, 40. What is the opposite of neatness? Disorder. Disorder, yes. Dirty. And that's right, something that is dirty or disordered. And sometimes that happens and we need to put things in order and pray that the Lord will help us to be more orderly. And one of the th projects that we could do at home is going through each drawer. If, the, if we have a chest of drawers, we can go through each drawer and say, I don't need this anymore. Or I have two, I can give away one. So having less things will help us to be more orderly. Instead of so many, so many, so many that we don't know where to put them, we can downsize and have just the essential, right? Now, would you like to invite, we would like to invite some of our friends, the little friends, to come here to the front, you're going to choose one item here from the tray and you're going to remind us how we can have neatness, orderliness or regularity or whatever we learn from the chapters that we read in the morning or even the song the for the character quality. So any item that you see here, like we did in the morning, we would like you to apply it to the lesson. It's a practical application. And then again, if you did something at home to that pertains to the lesson, you can share it with us. Thank you. I choose sponge because it cleans plates and I wash plates this morning. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So you practiced neatness. Anybody else? Well, you know, the Boutes have adopted two Filipina daughters. One of them is from Iloilo, and she's a volunteer with HCBN. And I don't know if some of you have heard her call us Tata and Nanay. So, since she's our daughter, we will call her to ask her what did she do or to pick a trait something in the tray and apply it to the lesson. Romeline. <laughs> mm. 
Okay, I choose a cup. Um, this reminds me of um, the water that uh, symbolizes the sum, and then if you drink the water of life, which is Jesus Christ, you'll be filled. So, I didn't wash the <laughs> cup earlier, but I drink the water. <laughs> Well, drinking water also cleanses us, cleanses us inside, purifies us. So you did something that pertains to the character quality. And our other daughter, Janessa Joy, both of them did the PAFCO training together with Dr. Boutet. And they spent uh, time with us doing evangelistic child evangelism. I choose um, towel, or what do you call this? It reminds me the um, the white raiment that only uh, white raiment could could. Um, uh, it reminds me the righteousness of God. And this morning, before I left in our in the house of my cousin, I fold the the blanket and all my clothes to go here. Thank you. So she folded them before leaving just like Jesus did. He folded his uh, sheet before he ascended to the Father. Any adult or that would like to <coughs> pick another item from the tray? There are two more. Anybody? It's a family worship, right? So don't feel shy. I choose a blanket where um, they cover Jesus, and Jesus was safely rested in the tomb. And of course, I folded our blanket every time we sleep <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much so anybody else there's just one more left All right, I'll show it. And if somebody would like just to make a comment of what it is and what does it remind us of. We said it this morning. It's a spice or a condiment. What, what kind is it? Turmeric. Turmeric. So anything that is mentioned in what we read that can remind us of this? Jesus' body was anointed in spices and prepared for his burial. Why? I just had one comment. Um, what came to my mind as I was looking at that, turmeric is good for pain, to help um, deal with pain. And it just reminded me of our lesson when Jesus, he came, he suffered, he bore our pain so that he could take it away. And he gives us remedies to help relieve our pain, to remind us of what he really wants to do within our hearts. <laughs> I think I do. <laughs> oh, yes, I was reading in the lesson where um, Jesus didn't die because of the pain. Oh, yes. he, he didn't die... Uh, usually a person dying on the cross, it takes a long time. But it only took Jesus, I think, about six hours to die. And um, usually they had to break the legs of the person on the cross to get them to die quickly. But um, Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they didn't break his legs. 
And the bones represent um, principles and laws. And I believe that's one of the reasons in the prophecy it said that there wouldn't be a bone broken in Jesus because he kept the whole law. And so um, the pain that he suffered more than the pain on the cross was the sins of this world and probably uh, the sins of those who rejected him and wouldn't accept the gift that he gave in giving his life. He died of a broken heart mm -hmm. that there was no remedy for except what he did. Thank you. So we're going to sing some scripture songs and we invite you to open the word of God and the book of John chapter 15 verse 13 John 15 13 Now we invite you to open the Word of God on the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. John 3, 16. invite you to open on the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 through 11 Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through 11. And took upon him the form of a 
was made in the likeness of man, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also really encourage you to try to get the family bible lesson year one uh, quarter one it comes in a cycle of three years and it goes through the whole bible and the beauty of it is that it's already prepared for you with the bible reading the memory verse the character quality the spirit of prophecy in it and nature And then you can add a little touch to worship, praying and saying, Lord, how can I make worship hour the best hour of the day for the children that they look forward to it? Sometimes the children ask us, are we going to have worship? Let's have worship because they are happy that there is something special coming on worship. Um, It's really good because even the children can learn spelling, can learn reading. You invite them to read. You give them assignments throughout the day to write the memory verse. Uh, you encourage them to memorize it. And I would like to also invite you to write a list, uh, just like they do in church. And you say, okay, this week... You will be in charge of the initial prayer. You will be in charge of welcoming the family. Then you would have the scripture reading. And, you know, according to their ages, you can uh, have a little assignment for each one of them so they can feel part of the family and participate in worship. And it's also... Uh, look for things within your house. Look for things on your nature walk that r would remind you about the lesson. And as you read to your children, they would not memorize only few verses. Sometimes they've memorized a whole chapter, which is a blessing. I wish that I had grown learning so many memory verses and engraving it in my mind so uh, i encourage you to start doing that in your worship time and make it the happiest time for the family as we continued in the seminar you will see that in the family roles are important we will touch about that 
And the Father, I encourage you also, the priest of the home, the one in charge of the worship time, that you will be the husband. You remember that word comes from house bound, meaning is the one who tied up the house and keep the house in order. And we are the ones in charge of the worship time, so we make sure that it is in the proper way done, the rules are followed, and the order is kept. And of course, you know, mothers, ladies have that touch of beauty, ideas, and encouragement for the worship time. Sometimes ideas come from one point to the other one, but definitely the ladies have the blessing of having that art in your heart. So use that for your children also, as she was saying. Look for things during the day that you can use in the worship time hour. Things that will be attractive and interesting to the children and also related to the topics you're using. And you can have many, many lessons. It's not to make the hour of worship a plain thing. Because remember, this is one, one of the things we have to consider. We want to train the children in a way that they will behave in church as they should be. The house is the one, the place of school to teach them. Now we are going to have the last song as we finish the worship time, Psalm 95.6. So you can find it also, Psalm, Psalms 95.6. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the privilege you have given us to have a family. Thank you so much for the privilege to give us the opportunity to reflect your character in the home, in the marriage. That children can see you through us. What a privilege, but what a responsibility also. Help us, Lord, that the families of this community, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Help us that we may be a light to the world. That when they see our families, when they see the good works, they may glorify the Father which is in heaven. Because it is not that we can do it. It is not our power. This is not because of us. This is because of the Holy Spirit working in the heart of our children. And even in our own hearts as marriage. Guide us, Lord, that we may die to the old men and resurrect in a new life as Jesus did. Bless us tonight as we go to rest, that we may keep pondering in these thoughts and enjoy more communion with you as we think of these topics. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.